Similarly, if you look at this pseudomonas, it loves all the rubber. So, rubber reminds me of Kerala, all the rubber plantations. Nail punctured sneakers are the ones who are at the risk. So, whirlpool folliculitis, even hospital plastic is a very common source for the pseudomonas spread. So, those who have cystic fibrosis or diabetes or neutropenic patients, it is the hospital plastic where that acts like a source of infection, like all that hanging uh, uh, hospital plastic. Then malignant otitis externa, ectima, granulosum, these are the things you need to remember. So, let us run through a few pictures. Swimmers, yeah. What is the organism implicated? Pseudomonas. Hot tub folliculitis, classically. What do you need to remember? Pseudomonas. Echithema granulinosum. This patient had a pseudomonas septicemia that lead to development of a ectema ganglionosum, a spotter, which you should be able to recognize. And uh, what is the mechanism of the toxin of the pseudomonas, doctor? Typically, the toxin will go, affect the elongation factor, and uh, it will lead to ADP ribosylation of the elongation factor 2. And uh, when the elongation factor 2 is inactivated, that lead to development of a blocked protein synthesis is what you need to ultimately remember. Now, monocytosis. There are certain uh, bacterial conditions which and viral conditions that lead to monocytosis and the formation of granuloma. What are they? Syphilis, tuberculosis, Epstein-Barr virus, Listeria. These four organisms you should not forget when you talk about monocytosis and granulomas is what I want to bullet you clearly. Now, some quick comments on Salmonella. It is a raw chicken and eggs. Turtles. Salmonella is implicated. Salmonella has a capsule. That's the reason those who are having sickle cell anemia, whose spleen is affected, capsulated organisms are very common. Salmonella osteomyelitis is common, typically in those who are having sickle cell disease. Then what is the speciality of the Salmonella? Salmonella is yes. Sulfur is yes. So, H2S production. Salmonella produces hydrogen sulfide that will typically create black colonies on the hectoin agar is one of the favorite MCQ in the tomorrow's need PG exam. And Salmonella love to form a double bedroom apartment inside the gallbladder and stay forever. So, the gallbladder is the place where it loves to go. Salmonella dysentery is the most common type of subset worldwide. Whereas enteritis Salmonella is most common in America. And Salmonella typhi lead to typhoid fever. And what is that buzzword about typhoid fever? Rose spots. You should not forget. And it can lead to development of a heart block. Salmonella is capable. Typhoid fever can also lead to mortality due to heart block. And uh, these are the classical example of the rash of the enteric fever where you are having the rose spots in case of typhoid and paratyphy. Infection is what you have to ultimately remember. Then what is that agar I told you, which will detect the sulfur production by the salmonella? It is called hectoen agar is what you have to ultimately remember. Definitely one question is going to come. Next comes the serratia marasens. One of the favorite questions of the examiner. Pseudohemoptysis is formed by, is caused by which organism? Pseudohemoptysis. It is not a real hemoptysis. Serratia marasens. Typically, it produces a cherry colored pigment. That's the reason it uh, typically is called pseudohemoptysis, serratia marasens. Don't forget. Now, Shigella. Lot of daycare centers. Whenever there is any breakdown of dysentery, it is the Shigella which is being implicated. What are those cells that the Shigella goes and infects or attacks? They are called M cells. M cells are also called microfold cells. And it is the GALT, 
the gut associated lymphoid tissue where you find the young cells which are the shigella is having the affinity is what I want to underscore. Another favorite bullet of examiner. 30 years, 28 years, 60 years, which S is the one that Shigella goes and in inhibits. In exam hall, it is like remembering Vayavyastra or Agnayastra. If you forget the mantra, the bullet, unfortunately, there are 1.25 lakh students who are competing for the exam. So be very sure that it is a survival of fittest in Indian entrance scenario. Unfortunately, nothing to do with intelligence. Let me tell you, your ranks doesn't reflect anything. It's a question of smart pickup of favorite examiners, favorite questions. Be thorough with that. Go to the exam. Totally, there are not more than 20,000 points that you need to remember in 650 topics. If you know that, you are done. If you know 50% of them, you are only 50% done. Be very sure. So, it destroys 6 years of ribosome. Don't forget the 6 years. On you Medico app, you can set up a reminder. Hey, every day morning, remind me 60 years, 60 years, 60 years until I forget it. Until I remember it, sorry. Now comes the Shiga toxin. Shiga toxin is the one which can be responsible for a very fulminant course with seizures, loose tools, etc. etc. Shigella sonia is in America, dysentery is most common worldwide is what need to be remembered. Then comes the Vibrio cholera. Three, four classical uh, uh, examples. I mean bullets. Hum is desh ke vasi hai. Jis desh mein kya behti hai? TB behti hai. Cholera behti hai. So that is what you need to remember. So food sanitation, rice water quality stools, but bullet is ADP ribosylation, turning on the High cyclic AMP production like E. coli is the nature of the cholera. So how do you treat? The oral rehydration, tetracycline, doxycycline are the ones which need to be used. So this is how the cholera toxin acts on the ganglioside receptors. And then adenylate cyclase production will cause increased cyclic AMP which in turn will go and cause the activation of CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor. And that lead to the secretion of chloride rich diarrhea in case of the Vibrio cholera is what need to be remembered. Vibrio parahemolyticus, why do you want to remember? It is a raw fish consumption which lead to it. Favorite question of the examiner, somebody had a raw fish and later developed a, a septicemic picture. Think of parahemolyticus. Vibrio vulnificus, why do you want to remember? It is a raw oysters if you happen to eat. So these are the oysters, you went for a honeymoon, honeymoon and marriage should not wait for getting a PG entrance seat. Whether you get or not finish that, that part of the bylaw requirement. So let us assume that you topped the MD entrance, need PG, married a beautiful girl or a boy, right? And uh, went to Goa, had good oysters, next day you are being found septicemic. Then what do you think? Vibrio vulnificus is something that you should not forget. Similarly, the swimmers, whenever they have few small cuts, it is also the infection of the Vibrio vulnificus. So while walking on the beach, you should be doubly sure that you don't have cuts. How miserable is the doctor's life? For every small thing, we remember Ananthanara in microbiology or something else. While all our non-medical friends are enjoying the life easily, right? Now. What are those comma shaped organisms? You should not forget H. pylori, Listeria, Vibrio, these three are called the comma shaped organisms. Two, three comments on Ersenia enterocolitica. If at all clinical picture is like appendicitis and uh, it is appendicitis in fact, then what is a, it is not appendicitis but picture is like appendicitis with abdominal pain right sided. You should think of Ersenia. Ersenia will go and infect the mesenteric lymph nodes and the pain will be similar to that of the appendicitis. Ersenia is also implicated in Ritter syndrome where it is a post-infectious arthritis that people develop Ritter's. Ersenia is implicated. 
and the drug of choice is the ciprofloxacin is what need to be remembered. Now, what are those organisms which are spore formers uh, typically that form the spores? Bacillus anthracis and Clostridium botulinum. You should not basically forget. Now, two, three comments on Ersinia pestis. Rats and fleas, bubonic plague. And what is bubo? It is an infected lymph node. And uh, very common question. What is the treatment of choice? Drug of choice. You should not forget. It is streptomycin is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, a few comments on Bordetella purchases. It is gram negative. Just now we discussed no gram negative organisms which can still produce exotoxin. That is the speciality of the purchases. The moment purchases is say, immediately the gray cells of your brain must talk about this exotoxin story. It inhibits the inhibitory type of G by ADP, ADP ribosylating it and that lead to high cyclic AMP. Purchases is never forgotten because of the high lymphocytosis and it will not cause reinfection. That is the good news at least about it. And uh, there is a catenal stage, paroxysmal stage where a staccato type of a coughing is a classical thing. Finally, convalescent stage and uh, you use a nasopharyngeal swab with immunofluorescence in order to detect it. And erythromycin, not only the patient with pertussis, entire family should be treated and uh, you all know DPT vaccine. Now, some of the organisms, these creatures, bacteria, they are called the big mamas and aerobes. What are those organisms? Bacteroides fragilis, Streptococcus bovis, Clostridium septicum. These are called big mama anaerobes. And what is the treatment of these anaerobes? Cefoxetine, clindamycin, metronidazole are the important anaerobic antibiotics that you need to remember. Now a few comments on brucella. Brucella is common among veterinarians, farmers and what type of fever it is called? Undulating fever. When do you call undulating fever? If uh, you get more than 5 fever spikes in a given one day, then that is called undulating fever. Please don't forget this. Favorite question of the examiner, undulating fever. I still remember our medicine professor after joining uh, MD. Hey man, what is undulating fever? Was the question in the ward rounds. Within about two weeks, we already know what are all the favorite questions of our examiner. Already we got a seat only by uh, knowing the bullets. Only we need to know what is your professor's bullets. That you will know as postgraduates within two weeks. So, fever spikes more than five times. You have a brucella abortus, cows, suis, pig, melatonesis, goats are the different types. Then comments on Franciella tularemesis. It is also a gram negative cocobacillus. That is a speciality. Rabbit ticks, deer ticks, tularemia. That is the buzzword that you have to basically remember. And uh, there will be an ulcer at the tick bite site and streptomycin and tularemia, the drug of choice. You should never forget. So that is all the story of the gram negative organisms.